How's that? Is this better? Checking, testing, one, two, three. I think this is better. Um, so, all right. I'm going to restart what I was saying, despite the fact that, quite honestly, I haven't really been saying much of anything, because, as I was saying at the beginning, um, I'm amazed I'm holding it as well, holding it together as well as I am. Let's start at the beginning. October 14th is Janelle's birthday. That was 15 days ago on a Saturday. We went to Cheesecake Factory, bought a little tiny cheesecake, took it home. Janelle then poured ch cherry compote. And as she likes to put say, sh she made it like her mother did. And we celebrated her birthday. The next day, we had a second round of cheesecake, some McDonald's. She made some nachos, and we sat down and we watched a movie on TV, or actually on streaming, because <laughs> there's hardly anybody's using watching uh, broadcast TV anymore. But then she started to complain that she had a headache. Now, this happens every now and then, so we didn't think anything of it. And then she told me her face was tingling. So that also is not uncommon because she suffers from what's called um, peripheral neuropathy from her feet. In other words, her feet have an issue where sometimes she's numb, so sometimes it tingles. But most times it's fine. She has no problem motor, you know, walking, in, nothing like that. But just, okay, sometimes if you tap her foot, she doesn't feel it. whoop de do. But then... She had this bottle of kiwi strawberry water from Propel. Now, it has a nice taste to it, but she was drinking from it. She says, like, that's weird. I can't taste anything. Now, we already know if you lose your ability to taste and smell, that's a symptom of COVID. So we just thought, oh, crud, you got COVID, and we had a vaccine like a couple of weeks, a booster actually, a couple of weeks, like a week before. So it's like either it's a side effect of the vaccine, and she actually got COVID, which is kind of weird because our mRNA, obviously, mRNA vaccines can't actually give you COVID. Um, so maybe it was just unlucky, and she happened to have gotten contracted COVID before she got her vaccination. But no matter what, we thought crap. So we pull out the old home test, did it negative says she doesn't have covid so we're like but she can't taste anything so she even hands me the water and i drink from it and say oh yeah i could taste it fine so like shoot but then we sat down watched a little bit more tv and when the show ended she then decided to get up and go to um the bathroom and when she found she couldn't stand she literally had to hold on to an end table in order to keep herself balanced and then plopped herself back in the chair and she was saying i've got vertigo and i'm like okay this is getting weird you know from first a headache then some tinglies then last then she just loses her um sense of taste and smell and then now she can't has no balance so while on the onset it sounds like covid but it the balance okay that one's like out in left field so if you know about me three years ago i fell down the stairs and shattered my leg now i've since fully recovered but during my re um rehabilitation i had a walker and so i said wait we still have that in the closet so i went to the closet grabbed the walker gave it to her and she was using it to get to the restroom and she found she can't go anywhere without that walker so we're like okay that's just weird. Um, okay, let's see here. Click to reply. Looks like somebody's ch uh, going onto this chat here. And how do you mark someone as a um, seriously loser? Uh, let's see here. Follow. Let's see here. Banned. Goodbye. <laughs> Yep, uh, Kuno, no, Kuno no Oni has mentioned Banham, which is what I just did. And yeah, it was a bot. Um, 
putting up spam. Anyways, um, those of you on Twitch TV, you just saw somebody just put up some spam. It's just like, which I will get to soon. Trust me, I'm going to get to that soon. So then we then go to bed. Now it is a Monday morning. Janelle is still, she can't walk. I mean, she can stand. She can use the walker. But under no circumstances can she actually stand on her own and not fall to the, on her face. Um, so that's why I said, all right, off to urgent care. So we went to urgent care. Um, it's like about a mile and a half from here. And went in there and says, hey, look, she's got something. We think it's COVID, but the COVID test we took at home said negative. So they said, not a problem. So they went ahead and took her in. They then swabbed her and said, according to our flu test, our COVID test, and the other disease tests, negative. She's got nothing. And we're like, but okay. And then that's when they said, well, um, we're urgent care. We handle sprains, splints, things like that. And of course, if you have COVID, we could tell you you got COVID and uh, you know, do some home remedies kind of things. But that this is outside our wheelhouse. The hospital that's a uh, half a mile from here, head out there. So we're like, fuck. So got in the car, drove over to the emergency room over at the um, Rockwall Presbyterian Hospital. Now, to put it in perspective, this is where I was hauled away to when I shattered my leg. So we've had experience at this hospital. Very good. Just so you know, let you know. Very good. But she then, they go in and they do x-rays on her. They do a chest x-ray, a neck x-ray, and a head CAT scan. Then they do a full blood workup. Everything's negative. According to the doctors, she should just be getting up and walking out the door. Um, but she's now starting to have difficulty breathing. And when we gave her a glass of water, because she was thirsty, as soon as it touched her lips, she just threw up. However, after she threw up, she said, you know, Janelle was saying, you know, I actually feel a bit better. Still a little dizzy, but I feel better. So at that point, the doctor's saying, well, we can't find anything wrong with you. Um, however, we believe this might be neurological because that's the only thing that would pass all these tests. And yet there's some still something wrong with you. So they told us that if this keeps getting worse, take her to the Dallas Presbyterian Hospital in downtown Dallas on Walnut Hill Street. Take her there. So we go home. This is now Monday night. We're like, okay, you know, she's dizzy. She's still fizzing, but you know, at this point, she's still fine, you know, relatively speaking, except her inability to walk a straight line. Um, so then she sits in her chair. She pulls out an old CPAP machine she used to use years ago to help her sleep and thought maybe this might help because she's starting to have issues with her breathing. So we then, you know, set her all up. I sleep across from her because uh, she's sitting in her easy chair. She usually sleeps in the bed. But she's now sleeping in her easy chair so she can use the CPAP. And now for those of you who don't know what a CPAP machine is, if you've seen the movie Spider-Man No Way Home. There's a scene where Happy is in his home and he's got this what looks like an oxygen mask on him when he's sleeping. That's a CPAP machine. It basically helps uh, hydrate you when you're sleeping for people who either sleep with their mouths open or have, or have some um, bronchial or nasal issues. It just helps you breathe during the night. Um, th but that's what we used. So Janelle then went ahead and tried to sleep, but as the night went on, she just started getting a little bit more hoarser and her voice started acting a little weird, you know, starting getting uh, just deeper and graspier. And of course she was saying, I'm having a little trouble breathing. So the morning comes and I said, I really think we need to take you to the emergency room. And she's like, no, no, we'll, we'll, maybe it'll just pass. Maybe it'll pass. You know, let's go maybe noon. This is like six in the morning. And I'm like, my spidey sense, no, we're going now. So we then 
get to the car, and now she's starting to lose her strength. So getting into the car was a lot more difficult than, in, you know, it, she just, you know, normally she just walks right in the car, sits on the seat, done. But here she's like using her, the walker, like an old Navy mode. So she's like really slow and very methodical um, and trying everything she can to keep from falling over. Um, but we get her in the car and the walker and we head down to the ER. And of course, as soon as we get her checked into the, e you know, just get to the, the clerk at the ER, they are, the hospitals are connected. So they immediately pull up everything from the urgent care to the emergency room that we had of the two previous locations. So they pull up her file. And then when they heard her lungs going like that, the nurse says, um, Gurney, now. And they pull, they, since she was in a wheelchair, because when we entered, we found a wheelchair. She sat down in it. And then they just simply grab the wheelchair and zoomed off into a um, triage room where they then um, did more blood workup. They did more scan, you know, x-rays and stuff. And they're saying, like, um, you should be able to just get up. We don't understand what the hell's going on. So we're going to have to transfer you to the um, uh, check. You, you know, they're going to have to admit her into the hospital and keep her overnight. And now they, because of her breathing issue, they see her blood oxygen starting to drop. They put her on a thing called a bi, uh, sorry, a BiPAP. Now a BiPAP looks like a, um, like a CPAP, a, a big full face um, oxygen mask. But in this case, it's actually tied tightly over your face and it pushes air into you to help you breathe. Um, so it's like one step away from her being um, intubated. Um, and then they take us into a room where we then spend the night while they're doing t test after test after test. Uh, they must have sucked so much blood out of that woman. Um, and, of course, they occasionally came in and did more x-rays. X-rays of the chest, x-rays of the neck, x-rays of just all sorts of places. Um, mostly because they're just comparing them to the previous x-rays to wonder, like, is there any progression? Um, because what they're thinking of, and they're constantly doing these tests, did she get a stroke? Because they're thinking... The only thing that happens this fast is a stroke from their point of view. Um, so they're doing all these tests like, can you do this? How's the strength in your arms and stuff? And normally with a stroke, the way they explain it to us is that you'd be weak in one arm, but the other arm be fine. And that's a dead giveaway that you have stroke. Um, no, nope, her strength uh, was the same on both sides. But it was weakening. She was losing the ability to move her hands and stuff until eventually all she could do was move, you know, like squeeze her hands. Um, so we're like, what the hell? So we spend the night. Thankfully, it's because this is just a regular hospital room. I was allowed to stay with her overnight. And again, it was another restless night um, with the um, BiPAP machine shoving oxygen into her. And her getting more and more worried because of the fact that um, she was having more and more trouble breathing. Well, the next day comes in. I've already alerted her kids that something's going on and she's in the hospital. So um, her kids were making arrangements to come to Dallas to see what's going on. Because at this point in time, here it is, already 48 hours since this nightmare began. We still don't know what's wrong with her. You know, according to the tests... She should just be able to get up, walk out the door, and go home. Um, so a doctor comes in that morning and says he really thinks this might be a case of, I'm probably mispronouncing it, uh, Guillain-Barre, um, which is a neurological symptom which is an, uh, triggered by an infection. But in order for them to confirm it, they need to do a spinal tap. So they wheel her down to the room where they do the spinal tap, but they found that because she has this BiPAP on her mouth, she can't lie on the table on her stomach um, without choking um, to do the spinal tap. So we had to go back upstairs where we get back to our room and they're like, well, um, we can't do that test. Uh, maybe we could try an MRI. And then the worst nightmare that could possibly happen happened and she crashed her 
blood oxygen levels started to drop rapidly. And they're like, oh, fuck, what the hell's going on? This is the part where I don't know what happened. Because they then just grabbed her and wheeled her bed out the door like you see in a medical uh, drama. And because they're wheeling her in the ICU, um, I had to go to the waiting room. And uh, I had to wait three hours going like, what the fuck? Am I going to be a widow? Uh, what's go What the hell is going on? Because, I, you know, I've heard of Guillain Barre before, but I didn't really understood what it was. And of course, you know, go, you know, going from perfectly healthy to, you know, near, pretty much about to die uh, in 48 hours, I was not coping with it. I, I just was like, I was barely holding it together. Um, and of course, I was getting text messages from um, my friends, you know, like the family and so forth, um, saying like, you know, we're on our way. Everybody's coming in. And I'm like, are they coming to help me plan the funeral? I mean, what the hell? Um, but it wasn't until a few hours later when I finally got a doctor come out and say, hey, let's go. So they took me into her room in the ICU. So you know it's bad when they put you in the, a room that's a, an area that says neurological ICU, intensive care unit. And it's like, fuck, you know, like what status, what state is uh, Janelle in? And then that's when I see her for the first time in the bed with a, she was intubated and they were just getting ready to do another set of x-rays on her. And you had all these wires and tubes and stuff like that keeping her alive. Um, because at this point in time, they said, yeah, she, her blood oxygen level is really low. And the only thing that's keeping her alive is this tube. Because if they took out that tube, she's dead. Flat out dead. So I'm like, okay. They said the word dead. <laughs> yeah. Um. It took every ounce of strength right there to keep myself from curling up into a ball, bawling my eyes out. Um, so what happens then is that I get notified that Amanda, who is uh, Janelle's daughter, Janelle has a daughter and a son, Zach and Amanda, uh, that Amanda would be arriving around 6-ish, 6 6.30. And in the ICU, I was notified that visiting hours are 7 to 7. At 7 p.m., I'm out. Nothing I can say or do, out. Um, so I'm like, okay, what the hell? And then that's when the doctor came in and says, the latest x-ray showed that on her right lower lung, she has a gigantic blotch. Either it's a blood clot or goo. Um... They're saying it's a pretty good chance it's goo because blood clots take time to form that size. And her last x-ray was only like seven or eight hours ago and it wasn't there. So they asked me for permission and I gave it to them to do an endoscopy um, where they take a camera through the breathing tube into her lungs to basically take a peek. And I was actually in the room, and I saw them, and I even took a couple pictures of what was on the ca on this camera. And what it turned out was her left lung had about one or two teaspoons of mucus. Her right lung was completely filled. She was drowning in basically her own goo, saliva, body fluids, whatever. It filled her lung completely, which was the cause of why she crashed. I have still on my phone went just before she crashed she texted me as she was barely breathing i think i'm dying and seeing her face how scared she was and i'm like i can't do anything for her and she's terrified because as far as she know with all the breathing problems is that this is it i'm checking out um and now here she is they they found it they know what's going on and they have the machines running so it's keeping her alive but of course there's always the risk of did they get her in time? Did they get her before, you know, before she had so little oxygen, she had brain damage or something like that? Again, you know, they were telling me all this because they have to disclose all this shit. And of course, my mind's spinning like, oh, my God, is my wife a vegetable? Is this like 
Oh, God. Um, you know, I, I just was barely coping. Um, but then they finally cleared all that crap out. And they were then able to get her to breathe. And then she's now got a blood oxygen level of 100%. Meaning that her lungs are working. The oxygen is working. But then they come to find that they can't take the breathing tube out because she's now paralyzed with her diaphragm. And she is now completely paralyzed. She is a quadriplegic. Um, we do not, you know, again, it's back to the, the nerve damage. Whatever is causing this is just still working on her. That's when the doctor said, okay, we are pretty sure this is Guillain-Barre. Even though we can't do a spinal tap to confirm, she's basically got this. And we need to do what's called a plasma transfusion in which the best way to describe it is from um, Team Fortress 2, where they had the sandwich. And after they do the sandwich and you hear the, the characters all yelling at each other, and then you hear the scout getting punched and the scout yells, Think you, you punched out my blood! You punched out all my blood! That's pretty much what they're going to do to Janelle. Uh, the treatment is they hook up this wacky looking machine and, I, and a trash bag filled with clear yellowish liquid, which is blood plasma given from donors. And the machine's job is to take all her blood plasma, take all the white and red blood cells, put it in the new blood plasma and put it back in her. So yeah, they suck out literally all her blood and replace it with, uh, you know, her white and red blood cells, but the plasma, the juice, shall we say, is from donors. The whole point is that Gu Guillain-Barre syndrome, let's just do it aside and explain what we now know is what's happening to Janelle. Either on October 8th, when she got three vaccinations, flu, COVID, and pneumonia, or she actually did get COVID and got sick from it. Or she got sick from some other disease. One of these three things happened. It made her sick. Her immune system started generating antibodies to fight the illness. However, something went haywire. And instead of attacking the virus, bacteria, whatever... It thinks that her nerves, that the ones for the peripherals, the peripheries, um, look delicious. And that her own antibodies are attacking her own nerve cells. The only saving grace for this disease, or the syndrome, it's not really a disease, it's a syndrome, is that it doesn't kill the nerves. There's a sheath, a protein sheath that covers the nerves connections. That protein sheath is what's removed. The... Um, it's the equivalent of taking a bundle of wires and stripping all the insulation off. So if you do that, then the connections and the uh, circuitry just short out. And then you don't have any ability for your brain to send a signal to your arm to make the arm move. Because when the signal goes through the spinal cord and as soon as it gets there, it gets to that bundle of wires, which all shorted, and then just... It's heck if I know. Um... So with this damage, it causes a lot of her um, systems from the neck down to essentially shut out, shut down. It even affected some of her head muscles, like her ability to taste, the, uh, the motion of her uh, tongue and her ability to move her jaw. That too is affected. That's where the tingling of the face was coming from. Um, you know, essentially any motor any nerve connection to a motor function in her body with the exception of the heart um was essentially disconnected so had she not been on a breathing machine her body would just simply forget how to breathe and she wouldn't even know, she couldn't because of paralysis couldn't um inhale and exhale um and that was her condition um so they exchanged her blood, and then they told me that they're going to do it again on Thursday, and then they were going to do it again 
every other day until she gets full, complete of five treatments because that is how you treat this syndrome because by the time you get the fifth um, exchange of your blood. Essentially, you know, the, the heavy coming in with a sandwich and punching out your blood, you got to get punched five times. At this point, your body should have already chilled out and has stopped generating those antibodies, or at least a level of antibodies that at least your nerves can handle, not, you know, a complete and utter assault on precinct 13. Um, So that essentially we basically began the stopping of the damage to her body. So that evening, of course, Amanda shows up and I'm like, uh, you know, one step away from curling the little ball and sucking my thumb. Um, thank be thankfully, because Amanda was there, we then get in our respective cars, drive back to our home here. And uh, she's just there for moral support to keep me together while she goes, of course, you know, talks with the family and stuff and let them know, like, what's going, hell's going on. So Thursday comes, and there's Janelle completely, like, zonked. Um, so we still don't know if there's brain damage. Um, I mean, she, she wakes up and she's responding, but we really don't know whether or not she's there. I mean, at least is she all there um but after they did the second treatment then she gets some improvement and now she's able to like squeeze our hands where before she couldn't even move she could wiggle her feet pretty good with good strength um and then i could talk to her and she's responding to me exactly you know like yes no that kind of stuff um but her with this big plastic tube in her mouth it could luck getting her to talk um but at that point, we're like, um, well, this is going to be the new normal until we you know, until we nip this in the bud and hopefully you start to recover. Um, for a large number of these cases, by the time they do the third or fourth treatment, you start to recover your periphery, you start to move your hands again. So we were hoping that that would be happening because I was hoping that either she'd be able to regain the use of her hand at least enough so she could hold a phone so she could start typing to us. Um, but it didn't happen. In fact, she started slipping back again, where her hands only could do this, and her feet were just wiggling the toes, and that's about all she could do. Um, that's when I realized, oh, crud. Um, I may, when she finally does get well enough to leave the hospital, am I going to have to set up the house for a quadriplegic for a period of time? Or maybe forever? Um, so out of desperation, I created a GoFundMe because first off, blood transfusions are not cheap. I haven't seen the bills yet. I'm pretty much bracing for bills that will make my eyes go like, I didn't know a number could be that big. And, uh, let's face it. I am not made of money. I'm not even close. I mean, I... That's why I use vintage computers, because you can buy them for 50 bucks, not, you know, a brand new Mac for $5,000. I wish I could get a new Mac for $5,000, but that's not happening. Um, so, my first priority is communication. Janelle can move her eyes. She can look around. She can um, hear you. She can hear you fine. That's not a problem. But her, everything from the neck down, bonkers, gone. She's on a machine to breathe. So I had to start focusing on how to get her to connect to the outside world again. Um, thanks to the fact that the GoFundMe went as well as it did, um, I've already started looking into getting a vehicle that can take a wheelchair I've started looking at her long-term care, maybe even somebody to come by every now and then to help her with physical therapy, or right now, I mean, these are all what-ifs. Everything's a what-if, um, because I, I'm trying to plan ahead, but I don't know. I don't know anything about what's going to happen. So we're going to skip forward to now what's happening in present day. About after they gave her her fifth treatment, 
they found that she's still quite paralyzed, which to the doctors is a bit concerning because normally by the fifth treatment, most many patients have already regained the use of their hands. Um, she has not. So they fear that because by leaving her breathing tube in for an extended period of time, um, that they had to ask me to, to do a tracheotomy. Thankfully, Janelle was conscious, and, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to make that decision. And we talked to Janelle. We just talked there, we talked to her, and she nodded her head. She understood. At first, she said, no tracheotomy, no tracheotomy, no tracheotomy. But as time went on, it says, like, look, um, a breathing tube can only be kept inside of a patient for, like, 10 days, 14 maximum, before you run the risk of tracheal damage because you got a freaking plastic tube in there. Um, so they need to get that out and give her a tracheotomy so then they can at least have her long-term on a breathing machine. Eventually, Janelle agreed, and sadly, it also meant that they're going to have to give her a feeding tube so that they first did a tracheotomy where they essentially cut your throat right around here somewhere, and then they attach the breathing tube on a little harness right here. And then the machine then goes into your lungs and you breathe through that. The downside, of course, is that because there's no air flowing upwards, you can't talk because there's no air going through and um, you can't eat because you got this tube going into your esophagus. So they have to cut a tiny little hole on your stomach, you know, on here, where they then put a little tube that goes into your actual stomach and then you get dinner by this bag of, uh, you know, Ensure, and just pour it down the tubes. Hey, would you like a nice steak dinner? We'll go run it through the blender and shove it right in. Um, because thankfully, the syndrome didn't affect her digestive system. So her organs or her digestive system, they're working just fine. So that therefore, if, if it was possible for her to get off the breathing machine, she could then, you know, I could spoon feed her a steak dinner if she wanted it. Um, so at least, you know, thank goodness for small um, miracles. But until she regains the ability to move her diaphragm on her own, she's going to be on that breathing machine. Um, this happened on Thursday, last Thursday. And of course, today's Sunday. So it was only like three days ago. Um, on Friday because they determined that at least the syndrome has been stopped because Wednesday was the last treatment. Friday, they found no more degradation of her condition. They had this like big thick tube sticking out of her neck and it goes to a neck vein because that is where they hook up the machine to literally suck out her blood. They removed that thing out of her neck, which took a while for her to bandage and heal that. Um, so on Saturday, was the first time she actually started looking like Janelle again. Um, because, you know, from here up, her face is normal, no more tube. Her only problem is that her mouth is like this. Because due to the fact she had this tube in her mouth for 10 days, she her mouth is kind of like locked open. And I'm constantly reminding her, close your mouth, go on, exercise. You know, do these exercises because I want her to regain the strength of her mouth so she will have the muscle memory again so that when she's at her idle like sitting here her mouth will be naturally shut because otherwise you'll her mouth has to dehydrate i've been giving her chapstick and stuff like that to help her out there i was able to get a an industrial grade ipad stand now janelle already had an ipad um so i took the ipad pulled it out of its casing um updated all the software, updated all the passwords for all of our Paramount Plus, Max, you know, everything. I installed it all on our iPad. And by using this iPad and this um, stand, um, I was able to wheel it into the hospital. And they're like, what the hell is this? And I said, it's like, entertainment. And wheeled it up to her bed, adjusted it just right, and said, so, babe, what are we watching tonight? And uh, of course, the way we're communicating now is what we like to call the word game. I just tell her, okay, honey, think of a word. Whatever that word you want to tell me, think of it. Okay. 
A, B, C, D, E. Oh, you're nodding your head. E starts with E. Okay. B, C, D, A. Ah, D. That's the second letter. And that's how we're getting words out of her. So I would then just, you know, ask, she would ask me, like one time she would say, just talk. She just wanted me to sit there and talk to her. Um, and other times she would say uncomfortable. You know, she would say U-N-C-O-M. And as soon as I got the M, I said, wait a minute, are you saying you're uncomfortable? And she goes like, yeah, okay. So using this little word game, um, we were able to get words out of her. Um, which, of course, the doctors are like, oh, is that how you're communicating with her? So it's like, yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the things she was also saying was B-O-R-E-D, bored, um, which... I can't blame her. How would you like to be sitting in a bed in which you can't move and you're totally cognizant and awake and aware, yet you can't do anything? Um, so, set up the thing, put up there, and then uh, the first thing we did is catch up on our, all the episodes we haven't seen on Lower Decks. Then we caught up on all the episodes of Loki. And then after that, she, I then said, well, what would you like? And then she spells Netflix. It's like, pull up Netflix... And I start showing her, okay, here's all the popular things. Is it on the screen what you want? She's like, no. Is it on this screen that you want? No. So it's like, well, then what do you want to watch? And I then played the word game, and she said, O-U-R, hour. It's like, hour? So I go to Netflix, search for hour. So it's like, okay, here's all the movies that start with hour. It's like, nope. It's like, huh. So I go to Amazon, because Amazon, as you know, not only have their own Prime stuff, but they also have the... The DVDs are everything in existence. So that's why you go to Amazon if you want to know the name of a movie. So I type in hour, and I then show it to her. And the first entry is our uh, flag means death. And she goes like, <laughs> it's like, okay, Max is what you're looking for. Make sure Max was installed. Because it was a show we've been wanting to watch together, but we had other shows we were watching in first. So I says, okay, we're going to watch our flag means death. So I fire it up. Put everything up going and starts she just starts watching the, the show and she's just enjoying the show she's a her bored like lying here on her bed with a little breathing tube here looking straight up and of course they have it just right with her closed captions on because she likes watching tv with closed captions just her thing um with the volume going uh, from her ipad and because it's directly above her perfectly aligned it's like yeah perfect viewing position and uh she's binged <laughs> The first two seasons of Our Flag Means Death. <laughs> um, but the nurses were coming. It's like, this is awesome. And it's like, told them, this is where you get this thing. This is where you can get that thing. And this is how you put it together. And there you go. It's like, cool. Um, but in the meantime, I've just uh, looked into getting a, what they call an AAC camera. It's a camera designed specifically to track your eyes. And then you can use it as an input device for an iPad. Don't ask me how much I paid for it. Um, but it's on its way. Um, but once I get that, then I'm hoping to be able to hook it up with her iPad, program it together, get it mounted above her. And then by using her eyes, she can then control the iPad and then be able to get back on Facebook and on Twitter. And then she could just talk to people again to help alleviate her boredom uh, when I'm not there. Because like right now, since I can't operate the um, iPad, she can't watch anything or say anything or be on social media to yell at people who are wrong on the internet. Um, so of course, you know, yesterday was pretty fun. We watched the you know first season of uh, Our Flag Means Death. Um, this today, we finished up Our Flag Means Death and we found Hell of a Boss dropped an episode. So I put that up there for her and then I found she was bleeding right here so we had a little scare where the doctors had to come in and they found she had a little tear here where her uh, tracheotomy tracheostomy was done so I had to clean that up and then later on she bled just a little bit more again and they cleaned that up again um so right now the nurse at this precise moment in time has an alert on her because I told the nurse this is what's going on blah 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 because I'm trying to be Janelle's advocate there to say monitor her for bleeding make sure she doesn't bleed too much or bleed at all and of course monitor her um breathing um due to the fact that you know if there's bleeding like somebody could go inside instead of outside um 
but it's it's back to the touch and go you know you know you think you're getting better and you think so, and then you take a step back and it's always been two steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back and um and of course, you know, we thought when we were eating that cheesecake back on the 14th of October that uh, tomorrow we go down to the Cheesecake Factory again and I would be getting either a cheesecake or a strawberry, um, sorry, what's it called? They have a carrot cake there. It's really good. Um, but I also like the strawberry shortcake. Um, and getting something like that, bringing it home and eating it. But of course, you know, I'm probably going to settle for just getting a small cupcake and just eating it at home and wishing her well because I can't bring food into the ICU. I'm only allowed drinks into the ICU. Uh, when friends have come by, during, especially during when the panic session was going, um, I had friends come by with tacos and stuff, and I would go out and meet them, and then I would eat tacos in the hallway while I am uh, literally keeping myself from completely passing out. Um... Now, Bernie Bad writes, Boar's a great stage, but uh, Bernie Bad also says, research says recovery could take a few months, but seems very hopeful. It's looking like, based on what is going on in the progress with Janelle, the most likely scenario is that she will be in the ICU for probably another week. Once they know she's absolutely stable and that she either is getting better or not, but as long as they know she's not going to crash again, then they've already started talks about moving her to what they call long-term care, uh, essentially the equivalent of a care home. Um, I've already told them that if they're going to do a care home, we need to find one near Rockwall slash Heath. Because uh, right now the hospital is about a, anywhere from a 45 minute to an hour drive each way. And um, that's very taxing because, you know, I, I run a video game studio. And when this first started happening, you know, I kind of let the company go on autopilot. No, no, I didn't even do anything. I just kind of disappeared because I'm like, I like, what the fuck? Um, but as of last week, I assigned all my duties to different people so that now um, the company's running on its own. So that I don't, I could focus more time on Janelle, um, because right now I I can't devote any time on the company because I have to get up really early in the morning, drive about forty five to minutes to an hour to get to the um, hospital, which unfortunately in Texas is now in the freaking rain, you know, with cats and dogs rain. So that's fun. Um, get to the hospital, go over to where Janelle is and just sit by her bedside and take care of all of her needs until I am booted at seven. And then at that point I drive home, which I get home like eight fifteen, eight o'clock, eight thirty, somewhere in that time. And I'm more like in the mood of just passing out and not doing anything. Um, it's only now when finally things have been stable for the past four days, um, that I'm actually was cognizant enough to actually do the stream right now because the past up until now i was too much of a mess that i couldn't even do a stream let alone um let alone anything else to be quite honest um but next week sometime next week we're going to be moving her to a care home um preferably near here if that's true then it might be only a five minute drive because I know there's some care homes just down the street from here. So hopefully they transfer her to there, uh, which, you know, ambulance rides. Oh boy, there was some more money going out the window because everything costs money. Um, but then when she's there, then hopefully that, you know, they start the physical therapy and just work with her to just daily you know, several times a day, just work her muscles until she starts getting her nerves working again to the point where she can actually work on a phone, sit up, um, get off the breathing device. Um, and uh, it's basically, she may be paralyzed, like in this condition for three months, um, maybe six. Um, you know, they figure that she'll recover in a year, 
but it's the kind of recovery is kind of like this, where you basically have nothing, nothing, nothing for a while. And then all of a sudden you start getting feeling and then whoosh, the next thing you know, you're getting out of bed and getting the fuck out. Um, but it's that part where she's trapped in her body and bored out of her mind. And there's very, very little I can do about it for her is what's frustrating. And I mean, at least I'm able to communicate with her, I'm able to just sit there and talk with her, keep her company, because it's one thing to be bored, you know, just for the fact that you've got nothing to do, but it's also to be lonely. And I've been in a hospital. I mean, I broke my leg, shattered my leg, and... I was, you know, that was the other thing, but boredom was one thing, but for me, boredom is no big deal. I just start imagining code and stuff like that. I can, I can work with that. Loneliness is something you can't work with because the whole point of loneliness is that you are alone. And right now, at this precise moment in time, I'm certain that if Janelle was awake, hopefully not. Um, she's just sitting there in the dark, scared and alone. And because of the rules, there's nothing I can do about it. And um, hopefully if she's in some sort of local care, um, then it just makes both of our lives much more easier because then I can go see her on a more often, you know, go to see her, come back here and do some stuff, go back there, et cetera, like that. Um, and of course, you know, hopefully once she starts getting her arms and legs working, at least at the minimum, she gets off the breathing machine then we can actually talk about just finishing up her convalescence at home um, because I know she misses it. I mean, she's been gone for two weeks and the kitties miss her. I miss her. Um, and she misses her house. This is her house. Um, you know, being in a hospital is, is scary. It's very, very scary. But that is, that's what happened in, in the last two weeks. That's why I have not been posting my cute little one-liner jokes, programming quips, and um, industry insights. It's just that, you know, starting October 14th of this month, both of our lives were tossed into a blender, and we have no idea when we're getting off this ride. Um, so bear with me. Um and just send your thoughts, uh, and if you believe your prayers, for Chanel, for a speedy recovery. That's that's all I want for my birthday. Because I just want my wife home. So. But, and anybody who contributed to GoFundMe, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't know how much that means to both of us. Um, that so many people came out to support her so that we will do everything we can for her to make sure that when she does come home, that uh, we can try to make her life as normal as possible until she's back to the woman I knew October 14th. All right. Thank you for the hang in there, BB from Burn You, ba uh, Burn you Bad. Dyson logos gives me a hug. Uh, Shard a uh, leaper says got a candle lit for her anything uh, i don't just any gesture no matter how small it is even if it's just thoughts that's all i can ask of anybody in in this time so with that i will leave you and i will um get ready to get to bed and see her in the morning <laughs>